Uh, thanks for joining us. Today we are going to talk about battery location for electric vehicle incidents. Uh, my name is Chris Soda. I am the owner of Junk Air Dog Extrication Training. We specialize in extrication training uh, dealing with electric vehicles. Check out our website, junkyarddogextrication.com. It's got a full listing of all the classes that we offer uh, for first responders, especially dealing with training in electric vehicle incidents. So today, uh, we're going to talk about electric vehicle battery locations. Uh, we're going to discuss where batteries are typically found on hybrid and electric vehicles. We're going to discuss different methods for determining battery location. It's going to be important for us when we're out on the scene of either a vehicle fire or post-collision vehicle crash uh, to determine the battery location, not only for tactics to be able to put that battery fire out if it does catch on fire, but so that we can monitor it and prevent thermal runaway and prevent vehicle fire. Uh, and then we'll discuss the reasons for locating those batteries. So battery locations. Battery locations uh, vary uh, depending on the make and manufacture of the vehicle, also depending on whether or not it's a hybrid or an electric vehicle. So there's gonna be some common places where batteries are found and we're gonna talk about those in the next couple slides. Uh, but they're not always found in the same place. Typically with all electric vehicles, they are going to be found in, in the same location. But when we start talking about hybrid vehicles using lithium-ion batteries, there's going to be one of three spots that they're going to be found in. And we need to locate those uh, to help us choose the right tactic for monitoring and for suppression of fire and thermal runaway. So the first location... Uh, where we may find batteries, lithium ion batteries for an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle. We're looking here at a three series from BMW, 2016 to 2018. And the first location that we see is in the trunk of the vehicle. Uh, so that's one component or one area that we could find it. Uh, the trunk, it being in the trunk, uh, provides us access, direct access through, through entering through the trunk. So we need to know that it's over there. The second location where we may find uh, these lithium ion batteries is underneath the rear seat. And if you can notice the difference here, we have a little bit smaller of a battery uh, in the trunk, and now we have a larger battery that runs basically rocker channel to rocker channel in the rear of the car underneath the rear seats. And then we have a high voltage line that's running closer to the passenger seat there. Again, identifying that this battery is underneath the rear seats can change our tactic or will change our tactic, tactic when trying to monitor that battery or trying to suppress any fire or thermal runaway associated with it. Now we move to the Cadillac 2014 to 2016 ELR, and we notice that we still have the battery pack underneath the rear seat, but it's also running down the center of the vehicle where that transmission hub typically is located on internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, so we go from in the trunk, underneath the rear seat, to now that kind of T formation underneath the rear seats and down the center of the vehicle. And that high voltage line is kind of further up towards what would be the firewall of an internal combustion engine vehicle. Look at the 2014 to 2015 BMW i3. Now this is an all electric vehicle, while the other three were hybrid vehicles, uh, and they're gonna require smaller batteries because the hybrid vehicles are gonna have two types of uh, engines, basically. They're gonna have an internal combustion engine that's gonna be able to power that vehicle in certain circumstances, and then they're gonna have an electric motor that runs off of a lithium ion battery. Uh, so that battery doesn't need to be as big on a hybrid vehicle as it is on an all-electric vehicle. So we notice here on this I-3, and this is going to be the, the common location for electric vehicles, uh, the, the battery for them. And we notice that this battery runs from behind the front wheels to just in front of the rear wheels, from rocker channel to rocker channel on here. And that's going to be the location, again, for uh, for our, our all-electric vehicles, that's where that battery is going to be. It provides the most amount of space um, for the manufacturer to get as many batteries in there as possible or individual cells in there as possible because this vehicle doesn't have an internal combustion engine to be able to drive it down the road. 
So different methods for determining battery location. Again, we, we need to determine the battery location so that we can monitor or suppress uh, fire if it is in fire, uh, post-collision or just a regular auto fire. So we have a couple different resources available to us to be able to do that. If you have an MDT uh, on your vehicles from, from your fire department or police department, you know you can access that if you have the internet connection on there. Or most of us are carrying our phones, so we're able to access the internet via our phone. So the first guide uh, going to be field guides put out by the NFPA. Now this is going to categorize all every single electric vehicle or hybrid vehicle uh, that's on the market, and they're going to provide us with guide sheets that are going to show us all the vital information dealing with that car, battery location, ultra high strength steel, reinforced steel, high voltage lines, battery shutdowns, all the information that we need to operate safely uh, on the fire ground or around these vehicles post collision is going to be located in this resource. You simply go to the NFPA website um, and you can find the emergency response guide categorized by manufacturer then subcategorized by make, and then again by year uh, going from there. So once you identify that you have an electric or hybrid vehicle, we can get on the MDT, get on our phone, we can access the NFPA website, and we can pull up the information based on the type of uh, vehicle that we have in front of us. And then what they're going to give us is the same guide sheet that we just saw before. Uh, this is the same one, the 7 Series 2016 to 2018. And what it's showing us is that we have a lithium ion battery right underneath the rear seats. We have our high voltage line that runs down the center of the vehicle. We have our SRS, our ECU control unit right here where the transmission hub is. We have ultra high strength steel in the B post. We've got our seatbelt retentioner here. We have airbag cylinders back here. You can see them on both schematics. So it's giving us all the vital information that we need to operate safely around these vehicles. The next spot we can turn to, um, if you can't find that manufactured vehicle on the NFPA website, sometimes the NFPA website lags a little bit. Uh, it's not gonna have the newest models up there but you can turn directly to the manufacturer's website. This is the GM Manufacturer First Responder website, and it's gonna list it by Chevrolet, GMC, Cadillac, Buick. You determine which manufacturer you have, uh, and then which model you have, and it's gonna give you information on that car similar to the NFPA guide sheet that we saw. So this Chevy Bolt 2022 is the make and model of the vehicle. Uh, comes directly from the manufacturer's website and it shows us again battery location we talked about that that the on the electric vehicles are all electric vehicles that battery is going to run from in behind the front wheels to in front of the rear wheels from rocker channel to rocker channel again it's showing us that we have ultra high strength steel in these locations here so it might make it more a little bit more difficult for us to uh, cut apart the vehicle it's going to show us where our shutoffs are, where our 12 volt battery is, where our airbags are located, or airbag cylinders are located, where our seatbelt retentioner is. It's going to give us or provide us all that information so that we can shut down the vehicle and monitor or suppress a battery fire if we have to. Tesla, if you come across a Tesla, Tesla is probably the uh, most popular electric vehicle out on the market. It is the most popular electric vehicle on the market. Uh, the Model Y is going to be the most popular model that's out there. And the Tesla vehicles, are, uh, they're all electric, obviously. Uh, but their website is, is the go-to for information. Uh, if you need it for battery location, shutdowns, those sorts of things. You type in Tesla first responder. And this will, this will pop up. They need to determine the model that you have. And they have the quick response guides. They have the emergency response guides. They have the owner, owner's manual. And there's a lot of good training information on their website for first responders. And again, here's the same sheet that you're seeing off the, off the GM or the Chevy manufacturer listing again. Showing us, hey, that high voltage battery from behind the front wheels to in front of the rear wheels. We've got ultra high strength steel, airbag cylinders, struts, um, door, struts back here for the rear hatch. 
ultra high strength steel through here. We've got 12 volt batteries, more struts up front. We've got shutoffs located within this vehicle. So all the information that we're going to need again to properly shut down this vehicle, properly monitor this vehicle, or probably properly suppress fire associated with this vehicle is going to be found right here. So reasons for locating the battery. Why do we need to locate the battery? Well, there's two reasons. Uh, the first reason is it provides us an opportunity if it's not in thermal runaway to be able to effectively monitor that battery for thermal runaway. Um, if the battery is in the trunk, it's as simple as popping the trunk, uh, ex exposing the battery cover or the battery in the back in the in the trunk, and putting a tick on there and waiting to see if we start to get any temperature rise with, with associated with that. Uh, but if it's underneath the rear seat, opening the trunk is not going to be effective. It's not going to help us. So we can open the side doors, we can remove the seat cover, and now we can monitor there. If it's in the floor, it gets a little bit more complicated for how we have to monitor because we have to be able to view that battery. So we may have to tilt that vehicle a little bit. Um, and there's different methods for that and we'll talk about that in another video. Um, and we discuss that in all of our electric vehicle training classes that we have. And the other reason for wanting to locate the battery is if that battery is in thermal runaway or going into thermal runaway, we have to be able to effectively cool that battery. If the battery is located in the floor, doesn't matter if we're putting water through the doors or through the trunk, it's not going to be an effective means of cooling that. You have to understand that the water is going to be the most effective method uh, for cooling those batteries, even though it's less effective because of the multiple mediums that we have to go through to try to get that water to start absorbing heat. So if the battery is located in the floor and you're putting water into the trunk, you are not effectively cooling that battery. If the battery is located in the trunk, again, we determine that it's there and we want to cool it. We pop the trunk, we apply water directly to it. Same thing with if it's underneath the seats, we can pop the, the, pop the doors, we can remove the seat covers, we can cool it. And if it's located in the floor, we're going to tilt that vehicle and cool it that way. Uh, but those are the reasons, are the two main reasons why we want to locate the battery. For monitoring of it, uh, for thermal runaway or potential thermal runaway, and two, for cooling and suppressing a fire associated with thermal runaway. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out our website, junkyarddogextrication.com, for vehicle extrication training and electric vehicle training. Stay safe.